get things going. You know, I mean, your faith is going to have to have a word from God in order to do something. And so, see, this woman, she believed he, that he went to the prophet. The prophet told her to do this. She went home and sent her sons out to gather vessels. Go gather vessels. Not just a few of them. Gather as many as you can. And he brought them back in. Yeah. Why? Because she believed him. And then when she started pouring, it, it didn't stop until the last vessel was full. So see, now this is a, a concept, a precept, that this is how God, God works. Now, he doesn't always do the same thing the same way, but, but you can see how he, it, in order to do, get anything done with the Lord, you have to have faith. You have to believe him when, when, when he leads you into this thing, the, these different circumstances. I think to be more accurate, we should, we should say they're accessible to the believer. Yes. It tells us to, it tells us to add them and so forth. So mm -hmm. they're, they're, within, they're within our real grasp. We can lay, take hold of them. Amen. Yes. I want to underscore again how this is everything God says, is that he says it this way. Yes. He, te he tells you what to do and then you have to believe. Mm -hmm. Amen. Expect, nothing would have proceeded any further if he didn't do this. And That's it's right. The same, it's the same with believers. If he says add to your faith and you don't do that. Mm -hmm. you know, Amen. If he says... Come to the throne of all grace to obtain mercy. If, he's, that's what, that's, if you don't do that, you, you don't yes. get the grace. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Amen. He says in 2 Peter 1 8, For if these things be in you and abound, yeah. they make you that yeah. you shall neither be barren nor unfruitful in the knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. Well, how do they, by faith, you, you, you're going to have to put these to, to work, these are going to have to be yeah. active in you. But they are in you, and, and they will abound when you use them, when you, when, when you believe it and you put them to practice. If these things be in you. That's right. Yes. That's right. Of course, you can't do anything until they are. You can't. <laughs> and, and, it, and, and this is God at work. He's, he's, um, actually, he's the one that's doing the work, but he's yeah. doing it in you. You believe it now. He's putting you to work, just like he's going to put Moses to work. The Apostle John confirms this truth with these words. You are of God, little children, and have overcome them, because greater is he that is in you than, is, than he that's in the world. So if, if Christ is in you of a truth, if you're walking in the Spirit, living by faith, then he's already supplied everything you need for life and godliness. But see, you have to access it. That's right. You have to live yeah. and right. walk in the faith. Yes. And you like live in that. Like a there's an abiding, you Amen. abide in Christ. He said, "Abide in me, and I in you." As the branch cannot bear fruit of itself except it abide in the vine. Yeah. No more can ye except ye abide in me. Amen. So that that, that at, we have the access because we're abiding in Him. Mm -hmm. Amen. That's right. And the Lord said to Moses, "Now, I don't know if Moses saw this coming or not, but this is." <laughs> He said, put forth thine hand and take it by the tail. And so what did Moses do? Did he say, no, I don't want... He said, and he put forth his hand and caught it, and it became a rod in his hand. Yeah. And then he tells them, that they may believe that the Lord God of their fathers, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob, hath appeared unto thee. So now he's told... Moses wanted something to tell them so they would know. And this is number one. He gives them this. This is what he yeah. do this in their presence. That's right. And and of course now we, we know Moses is faithful. He this is yeah. exactly what he does in their presence. Now actually this is not the safest way to pick up a venomous snake. You you go no. snake trainers. <laughs> they, 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 they teach you to get it by the neck, by by the head, so it can't come back and bite you. But you can see, Moses doesn't stop and hesitate. Moses is in the faith mode, right? He yeah. puts his hand down there, and yeah. he picks it up. The same God that can turn it into a, a snake, a, a rod, into it can keep you safe to pick it up. Yeah. And, and, of course, this is also going to be part of the sign. Moses yeah. is going to throw it down. It's going to be, and, of course, later, when he does it, it's, the, the Egyptians are going to make a, their own snakes, right? But then <laughs> Moses' snake is going to eat up the other snakes, right? Yeah. So see, the, God's going to amplify this in the presence of the Egyptians. He's just uh, getting Moses ready. 
and he put forth his hand and caught it. And it became a rod in his hand. Give, God gives Moses just what he asked for. He asked for proof, and God's given it to him. And, and that's what God for you. I mean, he, in other words, he, he, he'll take and he'll um, not just verify your faith. He'll, as you walk with him, he proves to you. I mean, each, 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 each step you take, God is, you're, you're getting closer and closer to, um, to, to, to actually being with God. And faith is the substance thing hoped for. So you're connected to God by your faith. And as you trust him, you grow in your ability to, to, to trust him more and trust him more. Yes, brother. I think God here is also showing Moses how much power he has. And that it's available to Moses. See, when you take a rod and you turn it into a serpent, you're taking it something that's completely inanimate, that's right. and you're turning it into something that potentially could be very deadly. Yes. And remember, the devil is the serpent. Yes. So he's put on the ground in front of Moses something that is very dangerous. Amen. And Moses fled mm -hmm. from the serpent like we flee from the devil. Mm -hmm. And uh, and then he turned it back into a rod. Yes. He's, he's showing that he can take that evil or something mm -hmm. that's very dangerous and flip it right back to something that's completely harmless. Amen. So it, it's not just that he's showing a miracle here mm -hmm. and a sign. He's given a little more additional information that he's got this great power. Sure. Amen. And it'll be available yes, to amen. Moses wherever he goes. Yes. Amen. And the Egyptian sorcerers did yeah. the same thing. That's right. The same thing. <laughs> yes. It says in the Gospel of Mark that these signs will follow those that believe that they will pick up serpents. Yes. Yeah. It says that. <laughs> yes. So God doesn't just give Moses one sign. There's this, there's this uh, precept, that two or three witnesses, right? God's going to send him with three signs. And, um, and it, it's, it's going to be very convincing. Very convincing. Now, it, God's going to tell him, Moses, Moses, Pharaoh's not going to believe. Pharaoh, you know, he's not going to, to heed to you. But see, these actually, each one of these things that God does in his presence is get just it's going to verify his unbelief, that he's, he's obstinate, that he's hard-hearted, and that he will not let the people go. So you know, Moses, God's going to tell Moses, he's not, Pharaoh's not going to let you go just because of these things. Yeah, but, uh, yeah, these signs weren't for Pharaoh. No, they were for the people of God. For the people of God. That's right. He had some special signs for Pharaoh. Yes, he did. Ten of them. Amen. And they didn't convince him. They either. didn't convince him either. That's right. <laughs> so he gives them this other sign. The Lord said, furthermore. I like that, furthermore. The Lord just doesn't end with one thing. If you live with him, you'll get the furthermore. Yeah, furthermore. Furthermore unto him, put now thine hand into thy bosom. And he put his hand into his bosom. And when he took it out, behold, his hand was leprous as snow. <laughs> now, you got to put yourself in Moses. I was, I was going to say put yourself in Moses' shoes, but he doesn't have his shoes on. So <laughs> you can put yourself in his place, okay? That Moses puts his hand, and he has no idea. Did, we read about this. We, from a child, I heard about this. But Moses pulls it out, and it's, <laughs> he knows what leprosy is. I mean, what a shock. And yet, you know, now we're reading an account of what God told him to do, and he did it, and so, well, he's just waiting on the Lord now. And he said, put thy hand into thy bosom again. And he put his hand to his bosom again, and it says, and plucked it out of his bosom. And behold, it was turned again as his other flesh. Now, Moses was quick to put his hand in, and he was really quick to pull it out. It was it wasn't just like a small yeah. thing. You he noticed, plucked it out. You Have you ever seen anybody with leprosy? <laughs> no. Uh, when I went with my sister to India on a mission yeah. trip, one of their mission works is a leprosy hospital. Mm -hmm. And when you see people that really have leprosy, mm -hmm. that makes all these stories in the Bible have a whole... Yes, yes, yeah. amen. You yeah. notice in all of these, uh -huh. there's nothing that indicates Moses was shocked or surprised or yes. taken off. That's right. That's he right. He, exactly. Here, he, but see, this is this, God's working with Moses now. He's giving him the signs he's going to do, uh -huh. and and but the, at this point in time, Moses doesn't know what he's going to do yet. But he's he's Moses picks it right up, right? Yeah. He plucked it out, and it was again 
And Moses, he, he, God is giving these signs to Moses so the elders will believe that he has appeared to him. That's what he said. He said, he asked him, I want, they won't believe me. He's not talking about the Egyptians. He's talking about the, his brethren. They're not going to believe me. And, but see, God already knows that it will re require all three of these miracles. It, and, and yet, the manner in which he speaks allows for faith. To, he, he doesn't tell Moses at the beginning, I'm going to give you three signs. He gives him the one, first one. Then he gives them the second one. Now, it, it, if, if we didn't have this in the scriptures, we wouldn't know anything about these things. But see, Moses didn't know the, what was going to happen. And, and I, I'm bringing this up because, see, we don't know what's going to happen either. We, we live by faith, and, and, and we draw close to the Lord, and he'll, he'll give us something to do. He'll, he'll, you know, and so, anyway, it's, in other words, the Lord sometimes is, very, is not very predictable. You don't know what he's going to do. His way's in the sea. You, you follow him, and then you'll learn what, what he's going to do. So, but it, that, that's the manner in which God works. So it, he tells them this then, and it shall come to pass, if they will not believe thee. Now, you say, well, you've got these two miraculous signs that nobody could do but God. Neither hearken to the voice of the first sign that they will believe the voice of the latter sign. So, see, God already knows the obtuseness of sinful flesh. They just don't believe. And yet he's, he's going to give them these things that when Moses does them, they are going to believe. Now, so it shows you that, that they, they, they have been crying unto the Lord, right? So God's already got them crying unto him for deliverance. And then he sends Moses with these signs. You can see how God's got the people ready. God's getting Moses ready. And when he gets there... They're going to, after these signs, they're going to be willing. And, um, well, that's a good thing, to be willing to save his power. This is what he tells you. And it shall come to pass, if they will not believe also these two signs, neither hearken to thy voice, that thou shalt take of the water of the river, and pour it upon the dry land, and the water which thou takest out of the river shall become blood, Upon the dry land. Now, <laughs> that's, um, I will, yeah, later the magicians are going to do the same thing. But see, this is, this is God working here. God's showing Moses. He's going to take these signs to them. And now, earlier, God has spoken these words to Moses. Come now, therefore, and I will send thee unto Pharaoh, that thou mayest bring forth my people the children of Israel out of Egypt. Mm -hmm. And that's exactly what he's going to do. But see, faith's got to get a hold of that. Before Moses ever goes to Egypt, he's going to be thoroughly convinced that God's able to do this. He's going to do this. And um, so Moses now speaks to the Lord concerning, I'm just going to say concerning his confidence. Moses isn't as confident when it comes to his own personal. He believes God. He's, he, he believes God can do it, but he, he needs his confidence to be built up, that, 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 that he can be in the work. At least that's the way I see it. That's what he says. And Moses said unto the Lord, O oh my Lord, I am not eloquent, neither heretofore nor since thou hast spoken unto thy servant, but I am slow of speech and of a slow tongue. And I, I, I think I understand what this means. Um, I, I, I really do, because I think in the, in the same way that Moses says he's slow of tongue, is the way, same way sometimes I am in being slow of tongue. It's like I want to say it a certain way. I can see it, but I put it into words. It, it can, and he knows how Egypt is now. He knows you don't go into Pharaoh and start talking. I mean, they're... Their orators were perfect. They would say things and it would just... But see, this isn't what God's going to use. God's not going to use the manner of the speech. He's, it's, it, it's what he says. He's going there with a message from God. And so God's going to talk to him about this. Now, some of the, some of the uh, different versions have... Well, uh, I'll just read them. It's, it's, some of them are good. Some of them aren't. The Lexham English... Bible says, because I am heavy of mouth and of tongue. In other words, it's harder, it's difficult for me to, to, to stay on topic or, or actually to say it. Now, 
That just been talking to sheep for 40 years. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> the tree of life person says, because I have a slow mouth and a heavy tongue, yeah. uh, I, I'm not real quick when it comes to talking about it. I, I, you know, Moses is very intelligent. We know that. He, he was a leader. And yet, this was, was the, what he, the way he thought about himself. And that's why I said I think he's, God's going to give him confidence for too long here. International Standard Version says, and I don't think it's right, I talk too slowly and I have a speech impediment. Now, yeah, how do you, it, some say that he was, he was a stutterer. Well, nowhere in the Bible does it, it suggest such a thing. It's just that, because later when he does have a lot of confidence, he speaks, in fact, he did most of the speaking when they got there. So see, it's just that he needed, he needed some confidence and God's good at giving people confidence when they believe. When they walk with him, God gets them ready. Yeah, I think you have it here, but Stephen said he was eloquent. When he was in Egypt, he was eloquent in speech. That's right. That's right. In, in, in the ways of the Egyptians. So I'll just read it. Moses says he was learned in all the... Now, this is all the wisdom of the Egyptians. He knows that they rely heavily on eloquent speech, right? It says, and the Lord said unto him, Who hath made man's mouth? Now, the very one who made your mouth can make you eloquent of speech, right? He's, he can give you to say it the right way. Now, that's something you have to believe, though. See, if, if I know a lot of preachers that are confident in themselves. But see, Moses isn't confident in himself, yeah. not in this area. I've been, and you've encountered people like this, and I've experienced it myself. They can't react. They can't react to something that needs to be reacted to. Yes. They can't. Right. They can't react. Right. To, and that, I gather that's kind of what he's talking about. Yes. He, he knew that he wouldn't have a time to say, "Oh, I go home and think about this." So, but he had to react quickly and that's react right. the right way. And he. Uh, yes. Uh, and God gave it to him. Yeah. So he told the Lord. He didn't tell him. He told the Lord. Yes. That's right. And so, so he, he did, I know Moses thought about this. This, this what God's oh, yeah. going to tell him. Who hath made the man's mouth? Or who hath maketh the dumb, or the deaf, or the seen, or the blind? Have not I the Lord? So every single condition that you can possibly be, God has done this. No, he, this had, he hadn't heard that before. That's See, right. Remember, this is the first time Amen. Moses has ever had a conversation with God. <laughs> That's right. The, he's 80 years old, and he yeah. has not one single time in all of his life yes. confronted God. Amen. And now he is, now and he's talking to him. Yeah, he knows who he's talking That's to. That's right. Yeah. And, and so he's telling him, it, it, I just love the honesty of Moses. Yeah. He says, I'm not eloquent. Why? Because that was his perception of himself. I can't. I don't, don't feel like I'm able to do this. Now, you see, like when like take creation, God spoke mm -hmm. it into this. But see, Moses, he did He wasn't conversant with all of these. Yes, that's right. With all of these things. Amen. Amen. But he now he knows he knows enough about God that he's the one he tells us. That's to. right. That's right. So God tells him, now therefore go. Yeah. And I will be with thy mouth. <laughs> and yeah, teach thee, and teach thee like what that. thou shalt say. Isn't that yeah. good? I'll be with your mouth. Yes, Isn't amen. Good? <laughs> amen. Yeah. Amen. He promises us, and he promises us the same thing if we're brought before, says that you're brought in the synagogues and in the magistrates and mm -hmm. powers, take no thought how or what thing ye shall answer, mm -hmm. or yeah. what ye, ye shall say, for the Holy Ghost mm -hmm. shall teach you in the same hour. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that is a, it's just say. a normal people. Yes. Yes. Amen. Amen. It's not the normal people. This yes. is the dignitaries, you know. Amen. That would put you before a dignitary. Yeah. You, you got to be careful what you say. That's right. Amen. That's right. Amen. That's exactly right. You go before the the Queen of England. You shouldn't go there in a yeah. in a pantsuit. You know. I mean, you're gonna have to make you got. It's gonna Amen. have to Amen. be special. Amen. And so you're gonna. He's going to Egypt, and he knows he's going there. As a representative right. of God, that's right. And, and he doesn't want he doesn't want to do it wrong. Yeah, and he's going before Pharaoh. That's yeah, right. He knows he has to he has to respond quickly yes. and correctly. Amen. That's right. Now, now the same a very similar things happen to, to um, Jeremiah, right? And this is what God tells him: Before I formed thee in the belly, 
I knew thee. So you're not, at, see, God's not surprised. <laughs> he already knows all these things. And before thou camest forth out of the womb, I sanctified thee. Now see, Moses was a sanctified person. Yeah. Moses, from his, when he was born, remember his mother yeah. noticed that he was special. Right? He, <laughs> so anyway, and I ordained thee a prophet unto the nations. And God had chosen him to go and do this work before he was ever born. Yeah, I think a lot of people don't believe this. Oh yeah, I agree. Yeah. But this, we have these records in Scripture so that we'll know that this is the truth. This exactly is what God, right. this isn't exactly just right. Jeremiah, this isn't just Moses. If God's given you a work to do, he chose you to do it. And which means he'll empower you, he'll, he'll give you all the resources you need to do it, uh -huh. and yeah. he'll, he'll lead you. Now, it may be a tough road. It, it, I mean, Jeremiah didn't have an easy road, let me tell you. But and neither did Moses. He yeah. said, yeah, stiff-necked people. God sent him to a people that he would talk to and give them these great, these great things, and, and they were stiff-necked. They did not wonder, and they resisted him at every turn. Yeah. And at one time, they got him so upset, speaking as a man, that he hit the rock instead of speaking of it. And then later, he told them, it's your, it, I can't go into the promised land. I'm going to die in this land because of you. Now, now that's pretty severe. And, you know, all the things that happened to Jeremiah, the thing is, is that God chose him for this. And, and, and um, so he was with them the whole way. Now, here, here's where self-confidence can get a person in trouble. Yeah. They feel confident they're able to answer anybody. Uh-huh. But when you're speaking for God, this yes. is not the way it is. Amen. That's right. Amen. That's right. See, Amen. Moses didn't want self-confidence. He wanted God-confidence. Right. He wanted to know this right here is yes. believed in most Christian circles. Yes. People are feel confident that they know how to deal with people. Right. Yeah. Uh -huh. But when you're speaking for God, this is not the case. Amen. Mm -hmm. So Jeremiah also lacked the confidence to speak. Yeah. You know, he, but see, he didn't go tell his neighbor. What is he? He goes. That's what he says. Then said I, O oh Lord God, behold, I cannot speak, for I am a child. Now, that doesn't mean that he's just tall. That means that he's, he's, a, like, yeah. he, he, he's not a full understanding of what's going on with the Lord, I don't think. But the Lord said unto me, Say not, I am a child. <laughs> That's what he told him. He said, I am a child. And understanding and what... It, it, don't say that. <laughs> yeah. For thou shalt go to all that I shall send thee, and whatsoever I command thee, thou shalt speak. Be not afraid of their faces. Yeah. For I am with thee, deliver to thee, saith the Lord. Amen. And he was. Oh, God was faithful. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah and God's people's faces have scared a lot of speakers. <laughs> yeah. Well, you know, sometimes you look out there and the faces, you know, they may not even be thinking about you, but yeah. <laughs> they can uh, be misunderstood. Yeah, faces, you wanna, <laughs> don't want to look at faces too much. That's right. So God's teaching both Moses and Jeremiah that they would not be expected to go out in their own strength. They, they, they'd say, well, I don't feel I'm not confident. Well, where did that come from? That comes from the flesh, right? Because if your confidence is in God, well, then you can do all things, right? As I'm, you can do all things for the Lord. Amen. I think you'll find that almost all the prophets responded this way. Yeah. Uh-huh. But he doesn't send you out in your own strength or with your own words. Okay? He sends you out in his power and with his words. Yes. And, and doing that, it, that gets the, the will of the Lord. Let us all remember that this is the first encounter that Moses has had with the Holy God of Heaven. That's right. But it won't be his last. No. See, now, next time... When, when the, he, Moses has an opportunity to go up the mountain, Moses doesn't run the other way. Moses goes up the mountain. Now, he, see, this is something that when, when you come to the Lord and you see him, whatever level of faith you have and you use it, 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 it causes a great dependency and love for God. You want to be with him. And so much so, you'll deny ungodliness and worldly lusts. You'll set aside anything that gets in the way because the fellowship with the Lord is worth everything. Yeah. So, this is Moses' reply. Now, God's not going to be real happy with this, speaking as a man. 
And he said, O oh my Lord, send, I pray thee, by the hand of him whom thou wilt send. Now, other uh, versions, they attempt to clarify this. And some of them are pretty good. And Moses said, I pray thee, Lord, appoint another able person whom thou shalt send. But Moses answered, No, Lord, please send someone else. Yeah. And he said, Please, Lord, do send anyone else whom you wish to send. Yeah. Now, Moses is convinced that he will not be effective in convincing Pharaoh to let his people go on his own. Just on it, and that's what I, I think that's what Moses is thinking. I know what I heard what you just said, and, and I, I'm sure that Moses wasn't kicking against it, but he, this thing that he just didn't think he could do it. Now, now I, I am con, convinced that the Lord is merciful here. The Lord's, I mean, it's what it's, and the anger of the Lord was kindled yeah. against Moses. See, it's important to see that's see what this. it says. Every person who confronts God talks this way. Yes. Yeah. Because you're talking, you're dealing with God. Yes. But this is what's got to be seen there. The reluctance uh -huh. angers God. This That's is how right. God is. Yeah. That's right. Amen. And he Amen. wasn't appearing to like a rebel here. That's right. Yeah. Amen. And this is God. Now we're dealing That's right. with God. Yeah. And see, it, in Moses' mind, it, 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 he didn't feel like he was the best one suited to do this at this moment. But see, the very fact that God said, I will send you, I'll be with your mouth. Uh, see, this is why it angered the Lord. He'd already given him a word that he would be with him, he'd be with his mouth, and that he would teach him. So see, this is... Now, what if, what if every preacher that stood up to deliver the word of God had this kind of attitude? Yeah. Mm -hmm. They uh -huh. should. Yeah. They should have this kind of attitude. Mm -hmm. They should be afraid to speak for God if it's not right. That's right. They Amen. Should shake in their shoes. That's right. Yes. It's a fearful thing to fall into the hands of a living God. See, Moses knew this. That's right. Yeah. Amen. Amen. His mother taught him well, didn't she? Yes. And so, this is what the Lord does. He said, Is not Aaron the Levite thy brother? Yeah. I know that he can speak well. And also, behold, he cometh forth to meet thee. And when he sees thee, seeth thee, he will be glad in his heart. Yeah. And thou shalt speak unto him and put words in his mouth. Yeah. And I will be with thy mouth and with his mouth. And will teach you what you shall do. And he shall be thy spokesman unto the people. Mm -hmm. And he shall be even as he shall be to thee instead of a mouth. Yeah. And thou shalt be to him instead of God. Yeah. And thou shalt take this rod in thy hand wherewith thou shalt do signs. Now, Aaron was to Moses what Jesus is to us. Yes, amen. That's exactly right. Yep. So God's never pleased with men that do not believe his words. Mm. See, it, 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 no matter if they feel inferior, the fact that God told you something, see, faith would, would press you into just believing yeah. that. But see, this is... This, think, this, go ahead. I think every person... Well, they have to grow in this respect, but, mm -hmm. but they know what when they know what God requires of them. The natural response is, "I'm not able at this time." Yeah. Something of that yeah. sort. It's, yeah. it's, it's the same kind That's of right. response. Amen. See, That's this right. Is what, this is God's reaction to that kind of response. That's right. And and what the way God's going to work it. See, Moses doesn't think at this moment that he's the right one. God gives him Aaron. To be a helper, but by the time he gets there, he's got God's work in him. Yeah. He's, he just when he sees it, he'll have the same reaction that God has. That's exactly right. Remember when he when Moses rehearsed all the law. Yes. Aaron didn't rehearse. That's it. right. Moses Amen. did. That's right. <laughs> Amen. Amen. He had confidence. You're bringing out. He had confidence. Yeah. Amen. God is merciful with Moses. Now, you know, we, we later he's going to show him his hinder parts, right? And this is one of his attributes he mentions. He's merciful. He's long-suffering. God knows that he's never appeared to Moses before. He knows that. And he also knows that every one of us, when we first came into the kingdom, we needed to grow. We needed to grow up. Well, it's, it's like that with Moses here. He's never had that encounter with God. He's having it. And he doesn't draw back from it at all. He's 
but he's honest. He speaks what he's seen. Well, he's going to grow out of this, that's for sure. And so he says, when he says, Is not Aaron the Levite thy brother? He's, I know he can speak well. Now see, so he, and he's already called, I mean, he, later it says that God will call Aaron to go with thee and, and meet with Moses. Uh, over in verse 27 it says, And the Lord said to Aaron, Go into the wilderness to meet Moses. Well, he hadn't said that yet. Yeah. <laughs> we know that this doesn't surprise me that Aaron, yes. because when Moses was in Egypt, he was the only one too. That's right. Oh, yes. Yeah. Amen. <laughs> so. That's right. And, well, yeah, he's been, he's been out <laughs> where he didn't have to so, represent anybody very much right. except so the sheep. Aaron, so Aaron, he's a... Uh, yes. He, had, he was the only one too. That's right. Amen. So it, Isn't that marvelous that he had prepared him to, to meet him? That's right. He, 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 he's he went get, up to meet him. That's right. And now, as far as we know, he hasn't heard for 40 years, hasn't heard one word yeah, of, about Moses. And yet, he gets the word, and he goes right out, and he meets him, and he, get, he kisses him. He's glad to see one another. And so this whole reunion thing, and then Moses is going to rehearse these words to him, yeah. going to tell him all about this. So Moses is to instruct Aaron, and God would be with them, right? It says, and thou shalt speak unto him and put words in his mouth. Okay, so God will supply Moses with a helper, and Moses will receive things from the Lord, and then he'll share it with Aaron. God did not directly teach Aaron. See, that would have made Moses' ministry obsolete. God didn't, didn't pick Aaron to deliver the children of Israel out of Egypt. He picked Moses, right? Now, here is, he, he met him in the mouth of God. Huh? Yeah, that's right, yeah. That's where they met. So Aaron, God drew it. Did, did God drew Aaron out of there? Oh, that was not a gentle jaunt across the street. Oh no! And uh, the they fact, met in the mouth of God. Is that yes? And I don't know if he had special permission from Pharaoh to do that. I think I he just know. snuck away to do that. <laughs> I mean, uh, Moses left, but that, that it wasn't a common thing for slaves just to you know run off like that. If they did, they probably chased after him. So now, I saw this too while I was doing it. It was Moses that God had chosen to send to Egypt to deliver children of Israel from bodies, not Aaron, just as it was Jesus that God sent yeah. to deliver us from sin, not the apostles. Yeah. Yeah. He sent Jesus. So what did they talk about? What Jesus put in their mouth. That's Jesus right. put words That's in their right. mouth. That's right. And now, see, Moses, is, God's going to give Moses words, and he's going to put it into Aaron, Aaron's mouth, and he's going to say it. So God has structured the church to depend on Christ, just like Aaron was going to be very dependent on Moses. Yeah. Moses is going to be the leader, and Aaron's going to be his helper. Now, Jesus is the head of the body. It says that he hath put all things under his feet and gave yeah. him, Jesus, to be the head over all things to the church, which is his body, the fullness of him. You see how these things are, these things are lived out in this account. God's determined yes, that Aaron. every member of Christ's body can excel. Yeah. See, Aaron didn't want for anything when he was with Moses. You know, he had, a, he had an understanding. He knew what was going on. Uh, Moses employed him yeah. in the work. That's right. There, go ahead. And he said, uh, he said to Moses, he said, See, I have made thee a god to Pharaoh, and right. Aaron thy brother shall be thy prophet. So yeah, that's that right. Picture. That's right. Amen. So anyway, I just, I, I, I saw that this is, what we're, the situation that we're in right now, we're part of a body, you know, and we're connected to the head, and which is Christ, who's, who is the minister of God. Yeah, it, it just, it's good to see that. Mm -hmm. And I will not be long, it, I said, I will not, it will not be long until Moses' confidence grows exceedingly. And remember, he's going to have this stopover at the end. And with his with his wife there, and, and the, the angel's going to stand there, and he's going to kill his sons. He had circumcised them. Anyway, there, there's that account, and then there's the whole trip there to think about all these things. And he had just he had already met, he had already gone back to um, his his father-in-law and 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 asked for permission to go, and he said, "Go in peace." So see, all these things, all these things were Moses didn't draw back at all from these things. He was honest with the Lord, and um, so the Lord has got him ready 
to go into Egypt. So, uh, this is what he said. And thou shalt take this rod in thine hand, wherewith thou shalt do signs. When Moses gets to Egypt, he will do most of the talking. God will use him to deliver the children yeah. of Israel out of Egypt with a mighty hand. And in the future, Moses will write these words of exhortation unto his people. Now, remember, this is years later. Yeah. It says, Did ever people hear the voice of God speaking out of the midst of the fire as thou hast heard and lived? Yeah. Or hath God essayed to go and take him a nation from the midst of another nation yeah. Yeah. by temptations, by signs, and by wonders, and by war? and by a mighty hand, yeah. and by a stretched out arm, and by great terrors, according to all that the Lord your God did for you in Egypt before your eyes. Unto thee it was shown, that thou mightest know that the God, he is, the Lord, he is God. There is none else besides yes. him. Yeah. Amen. Now see, we're, this is just the beginning, that God's getting Moses ready, he's going to send him in there, and the things he does when Moses is in Egypt, have never been duplicated, ever. Mm -hmm. This is unique. God set this up to show that yeah. he is God. He's going to send him in there, and he is going to judge their gods one by one. Yeah. And when, when, when Moses leads the children out of it, e Egypt, is going to be decimated. Yeah. This account is going to be the apostles. This deliverance is going to be what he's going to show tell you that this is what salvation is, that vivid Amen. depiction of salvation. That's right. Yeah. So now, so in, in, when you were held bondage by the world, when, 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 when you were under the bondage of sin, you were a bond slave to it. You couldn't stop doing it. It had control over you. There was no way, and see, the, and, and who knows how many, how many evil spirits, we don't, we don't know, that you were influencing every decision you made, and and leading you into, into things that you wish you, later you wished you wouldn't have done them. Why did you do all that? Because you were under bondage. Yeah. You couldn't get out of it. And so God had to send Jesus. He came and he delivered, just like the, he's going to send Moses to deliver these people. Well, see, this is special for us. Those who have been delivered, you can see your deliverance in this. As, yeah. as, this go, as we go through this, that. Well, God's a good God, and He's Amen. He's given us the ability. It's not, it isn't like um, this is this is optional, you know. That God put this in the Scripture for a reason. We, as you understand what God's delivered you from, you'll be more diligent in pressing in. Because yeah. if at any time we stop, we'll go backwards. Yeah. See this? this you see here is confidence grew, but your confidence grows. While you are doing the work. That's right. Amen. If you don't do the work, your yeah. confidence will not grow. That's right. Amen. And you notice it all through the uh, apostolic doctrine, he gives the God's people things to do. Yes, that's right. Work out your salvation. Yes. Turn to him and set your affection on things above. Mm -hmm. Resist the devil. Perfect holiness of fear of the Lord. See, but it's as you're engage in these things, mm -hmm. that's when your confidence grows. Amen. 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 Yes. These, th uh, these three signs that we talked about, mm -hmm. that God gave Moses, mm -hmm. those are figures of, uh, as Brother Gibbon was saying, they're, they're figures of, of salvation mm -hmm. that God is bringing. So the first sign is the rod and the serpent. Mm -hmm. God is showing that, that, that evil is present in the world. But he's going to take care of it. He's got the power to deal with it. He's going yeah. to show us that we don't we don't even have to be afraid of it. Mm -hmm. yeah, it'll, yeah. it'll flee from us yeah. with the power that he gives us. Mm -hmm. And then the next side yeah. is when Moses puts his hand in his bosom mm -hmm. and he comes out leprous. Mm -hmm. See, this is what happens when God examines our heart. Mm -hmm. yeah. mm -hmm. It's full of sin. Yeah. Yeah. When uh -huh. we take our hand out, mm -hmm. we're just going Pure. doing things. Yeah. Like we, like we are, like we do in the flesh, yeah. mm -hmm. and this is what his people did all the time. Yes. Amen. They were told of their sin, mm -hmm. and they just kept on going. Yeah. The third sign, mm -hmm. which is uh, the river of water, mm -hmm. this is a figure of Christ mm -hmm. who will bring the living, the living water mm -hmm. on the dead earth. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And when people still don't listen, mm -hmm. he's going to shed his blood. 
Mm -hmm. This living water, which which will take us out the river, shall become blood on mm -hmm. dry land. Mm -hmm. yeah. and all of those signs mm -hmm. are pointing to the things that God will do yeah. in His uh, purpose and salvation. Yeah. Amen. It isn't, mm -hmm. as you know, it isn't that this is done and God did this same thing in Christ. He said what Christ, God purposed to do in Christ. Yes. That's what he did here. Yes, amen. Just, yeah. That's just exactly the right. Around. Amen. Yeah. Amen. See, it, because God knows the end from the beginning, yeah. he's planned the whole thing out. So then these signs to him are just they're they're picturing. Yeah, now they would yeah, Moses wouldn't have seen that, but, yeah. we, but we can that's, see that because that's right. That's right. Open amen. That's right. That's right. Amen. Well, that's all I have. But, brother, I, I really enjoyed it. more than enjoy. <laughs> it was very edifying to me to go through this, and, and I got all charged up, and, and I've started <laughs> writing other things. But I, I, I'm very, very thankful to the Lord for giving us this account because, you know, as I was reading through it, you know, you, this, this matter what Moses, Moses did, that he knew he needed help. I think we've all been there. Yeah. I think you've all realized we, we want to do better. We want to see more. And, and see, God's merciful, but see, we don't want to draw back. We don't want to question God's authority and think that, well, maybe he won't do it. No, you just do it and trust him and believe in him, and he'll do the work, and, um, and, and we'll get a great blessing. Now, you in, know, in our day, I think most people don't even know this accounts in the Scripture. Right. Yeah. And you see what... How about that? That's oh, a, yes, that's amen. Robert. So yes. people aren't acquainted. There's a lot of long people, have been Christians a long, many years, mm -hmm. and they don't know the details that we went through. Yes, tonight. amen. And then some have been taught that this is all irrelevant anyway, it's all been blotted out. Mm -hmm. Yeah, well, it's not, is it? <laughs> yeah, no. Amen. Remember, Jesus brought up mm -hmm. frequently, he talked about Moses. Raising up the serpent, you know, and this sort of thing. He brought up these. Yes. Reflect. They are reflections. That's of right. Of Amen. the purpose of God. That's yes. Right. Amen. And the and uh, and the verse four seventeen when he talks about and thou shalt take this rod in thine hand. Yes. And thou shalt do me. This is what he's saying. When you go to Pharaoh, mm -hmm. I'm with you. That's that's, that's right. the rod you've got. That's Amen. Right. I'm Amen. your rod. Amen. Amen. And I will take care of it. Yes, amen. Now, another place, it, and, and I wanted to, to ask, ask Brother Given this, it, it, it says, another place, it talks about Aaron's rod that, bought, that budded, right? Yeah. yeah. Now, the question was, is, is this the same rod as... No, no, it's not the same it, rod. It's Aaron's rod. It's Aaron's that rod. was Aaron's yeah. rod. Well, the, this were, is Moses' rod. Yeah, they were all shepherds. They all had right. rods. Yeah. And the other, the other Levites, they had rods, too. Because okay. I, I know it, it, it says... It says um, Aaron's rod specifically, Aaron's yeah. rod. So, but this was Moses. I mentioned the other people's rod, the other people's rods too. But they were they cast them? They were swallowed up. That's but right. they all had rods. Yeah, yeah. But the Moses rod and Aaron's rod were blessed rods. Right. Amen. That's right. <laughs> Amen. Very good. There's a lot of things that everybody has, mm -hmm. but some people if they're blessed, and other. That's right. <laughs> that makes what makes the difference. Yeah. Amen. Amen. Very good. Well, tonight the, the live stream didn't work, but I'll fix it later. I'll upload it later. But um, uh, we're working through this thing. This is, um, it, it, it'll be remedied soon. And, um, but um, fortunately we could record it and then put it on later on to the, the site. Anyway. I think this is, this is an attack by the devil. Yes. And, and it, see, it can be distracting to me because I'm trying to get it to work, and I'm thinking, no, I just got to let it go. I can fix it later. Yeah, this is I can if we yeah. got if we really got something to say. Yes. This is this is a, an attack by the wicked one to yeah. try and stop this from going out. Mm -hmm. Fortunately, Brother Bob has been gifted by God to know how to work through some of these things. Well, it, it's it, we're very close to having it completely remedied, and um, tonight was a, a test. I didn't do the test when Brother Given was doing it on Wednesday. I, I did what I knew would work. But uh, this was supposed to, to work better, but um, it, it didn't work better. But um, the only way you know it is to do it. So I've done a 
bunch of tests, but see the tests are short. And the test tonight was as it got longer and longer, it just it just shut down. But anyway, I won't bore you with it, but it's but the Lord's helping me to figure it out. I want to well, I want to do it the best because we're this is I think this is very important in the time we live in that um we're able to get this out. Yes. And so it's worth the trouble to learn it and and um I don't have a degree in it, but God's helping me to get one. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well, have a word of prayer. Brother Gabriel, would you like to have one? Yes. Our Heavenly Father, we thank you for the time we've spent here mm -hmm. perusing your word. Yes, so amen. Robert's diligence in searching these things out and sharing them with us. Grant us grace to see these parallels. And Father, we thank thee for revealing yourself to us. Mm -hmm. And by thy grace, we aim to follow on. Amen. To know you. Mm -hmm. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Amen.